Hi everyone, this video is going to introduce you to your last homework assignment, Huffman Encoding. You might have seen Josh's lecture on Monday where he introduced a lot of the background information and high level description of the algorithm you're going to be implementing. So if at any point you're confused by anything that I'm talking about and you maybe didn't see that lecture, that's definitely one you should watch on Panopto. So there will be a little bit of overlap because I'm going to show you how to run the programs, but there will be some information that is specific to our homework that's in the specification that I also wanted to explain. So like normal, you can go to our homework page and there's all of the provided Java classes and the input and output files like, uh, that you could download. And they're all in this zip folder that you can download pretty easily. So let me start by running the program. So one of the new input files that actually wasn't there during lecture yesterday is this one for the spec example. And so in the spec, it walks through the algorithm for a specific file. And I, we actually just added a, a file that has the same letter count so you can get another chance of debugging a small file. So here's my file AAA, BBB, C, X, Y, Y. So the first step in order to compress this is to make the new encodings. The, the new sequence of zeros and ones we're going to use to represent each letter. And for this assignment, we're going to call those encodings, we're going to put them in a code file, so a file with the extension .code. And the way to make the code file is to run the make code program. I'm going to compile and run it. The input file name is going to be specexample.txt. And then the output I'm going to say is the specexample.code. Now, you might notice that there's some extra print statements here. Those aren't required. These are actually part of the debugging hint that is mentioned in the spec, and I'll talk about that later. But what it did produce was a file called specexample.code, and it shows you all the ASCII values and their associated codes that were built up using the Huffman tree algorithm that you implemented. Once you have the code file, you can now run the encode program that will take the code file and the original uncompressed version, the input file, so I'm going to say specexample.txt and specexample.code, and it will use those to actually compress it. So we're going to say, please save this in the file for the compressed version, and the extension that we made up that we're going to use for the compressed file is the dot short. And so it will, this program actually doesn't use your tree at all. It just uses that output from the code file and the original text file and writes the compressed version. Then now you can see you have a spec example dot short file. And let me try opening it up and seeing what happens. So I'm going to say this is fine. Actually, it shows up as garbage. Why is it doing that? Well, the computer, my computer, doesn't know the special encoding that we're using. So it just sees that sequence of binary and tries to read it like it is ASCII. And so it shows us the characters that it thought was there based off the binary and it just ended up being garbage. So looking at the dot short files is actually not that useful. And you shouldn't have to open them in the first place because to encode the file, it doesn't even use your tree at all. It just uses whatever is in the dot code. So if you, in the output comparison tool, I could show you right here, we show you what the dot code should be. And if you match that, then you have, you'll get the right encoded file. So you don't have to really worry about those minor like bitwise details. As long as your code file is correct, the compressed version will be correct. So then the last thing you want to do is to test the decoding functionality which takes the code file and constructs a tree from the code file and then uses that tree to decode the compressed file. So I'm going to run this one and it's going to say um, the encoded file name will be spec example dot short. The code file name is spec example dot code and then the output file name we're going to say spec example dot new. It's going to be a txt file so that we could see the actual characters, but we're just going to give it a different name so it's clear that's a different file. And again, it printed out some other information. It, this is debugging information. I'll get to that in a second. But now we'll have in our folder specexample.new, and it should, it's the exact same thing as specexample.txt. So we successfully decoded the program or decoded the compressed file. Okay. 
One thing that is different about this assignment than what Josh described in lecture is an extra technicality of how do you know that you're at the end of a file. So this part, the rationale isn't super important, One, but if you're curious, every file has to be a multiple of 8 bits long, but in our compressed version it might actually not uh, be a multiple of 8, but when you're reading it from the computer, it will just read whatever is left over as kind of garbage. It might say those are extra characters that aren't actually in the file. So you, what you have to do is add a special character into your code for the end of file. We call it a, a, um, a pseudo character. It's not actually in the file, but you're going to use it as a marker. And so it describes what you're going to do it, is you're supposed to add this uh, pseudo EOF as the last character in um, the tree. And you're going to represent it with a special value, which is bigger than the ASCII values that could be represented in your coding, right? So if you use something to, like 256, that's going to be bigger than the any of the ASCII values. You'll know that it's that special character that means you're at the end of the file. So the slides from lecture are super useful, but they don't include that EOF. Neither does this example at the beginning. It doesn't show you what the EOF looks like in here. But you should know it's described in the spec that you need to add this special character in. And if you don't, you're not going to get the same output. So this shows you the output of if you didn't include the EOF, and this shows you the output if you did. So you could start by making the code file without the EOF if you want to, and then include it later. But just remember, you need to have that special end of file character. OK, so now the other thing I want to talk about is how do you debug your program? How do you figure out if it's correct? So on the output comparison tool, we have the .code files. So for the .code files, you should have um, the exact same output as us. If you don't, there's something wrong with your algorithm, and you should make sure that the .code files you produce are exactly the same as the one we're expecting. Otherwise, your decompression step won't work, the compression step won't work in the way we want, and so you really want to make sure that you have this matching. Now sometimes that can be kind of tricky, so we have this extra debug output. So what the spec tells you to do is in your constructor for a Huffman node, when you construct a leaf node, one that has a character and a frequency, you should put a print statement to print out the character code, the ASCII value, followed by the frequency. So if you print, if you put that every time you construct a leaf, you should get output that tells you the like the order in which you construct the nodes. And if you follow the algorithm exactly like you said, we as we said, you should construct nodes in the same order. So it, that is this extra output that is in here. I added these print statements, like the spec said, for debugging. And now I can copy and paste them and check with the output comparison tool if I got the right counts and the right ASCII values. So this is something you can use if you get a little stuck. Now rem just remember, every time you include debug output, to re remove it before you turn the assignment in, because we don't want that when you're actually running the program. OK. Now, the last thing is um, you could also compare your .new files to the, um, the, the, the original TXT, and they should match exactly. I want to tell you about one gotcha that, uh, that, can, uh, that confuses a lot of students. To get these files, the, the input files, you should not open them, select everything, and copy and paste and save it. Why? D different operating systems deal with new lines and white space slightly differently, and the copy and paste way can cause a lot of problems. It might add in a lot of extra characters that you might not see. So what we say you should do is you should either just download it from the zip, or you should right click and say uh, save link as and actually download the file. So I want to repeat, do not copy and paste the input files because you might not get the right characters. One last way to kind of get be more certain that your solution is correct is opening up your tree in the debugger. There's instructions for how to set up JGRAS to do this. 
uh, in the spec so you could look at the tree and we actually provide some diagrams of what the tree should look like. So for this short example, which isn't actually that short, we show you the exact frequencies and the exact characters that you should receive. So if you open up your tree in the debugger, you should see exactly this. Well, I mean, the, the way JGrass shows it, they look a little bit different, but you should have the exact same counts and the exact same characters in the same positions. And if you don't, well then, that might be where your bug is. So you should go figure out why your tree doesn't look exactly like ours. And remember, first thing you might want to try for this assignment, just because there's all that character weirdness, is deleting the input files and re-downloading them, just to make sure you really didn't do that copy and paste bug. Okay, that's all I have. Good luck on the homework, and uh, I'll see you next time.